Hello, I'm Scott Manley and I am now exploring the Kerbin system in version 0.17 of Kerbal Space Program. I know a lot of you are still having trouble getting it, but uh, the rush is tailing off. Hold strong, <laughs> you'll get it. Um, so yeah, with the addition of 0.17, we have a whole bunch of new planets and some of these have new hazards uh, beyond those normally associated with bad piloting. So I have come to the planet Moho to specifically discuss what you need to know about landing on this. Now, the first thing that I am not even gonna cover here is that it is actually the hardest one to get to. It requires the most delta V. You have to get way inside the sun. There is no atmosphere for aero braking, unlike a jewel, which uh, you can at least slow down there. Uh, there is, actually, that's not true. There is a very tenuous atmosphere, but it is not enough to slow you down, especially if you're coming in from an interplanetary trajectory. Uh, the reason the atmosphere is there is because apparently the heat system uh, is based on the temperature of the atmosphere. So they've given the planet an atmosphere which is very high to simulate the fact that it is supposedly volcanic and near to the Kerbal Sun. This means that when you're running your engines, your system heats up very, very easily. You can see here I have about 40% thrust on this small engine and uh, my temperature is up around 80%. I'm very close to overheating this thing, but I can also see that I'm heading down inside this crater over 200 meters per second, and I am very afraid I'm gonna run out of a runway or run out of a distance before I hit the ground. So I overheat my system and all that's left is, <laughs> all that's left is the capsule and uh, the engine with some pieces attached. But uh, even these don't last long in the heat as we head down below one kilometer. And uh, in a moment, we are gonna smack into the ground and uh, fully experience the temperature of this planet. Yes. I mean, so that's one thing. You can't overthrust because that will make your engine explode. Similarly, of course, just like any other planet, uh, you can't underthrust because if you <laughs> do this, you will find yourself flying towards the planet and uh, smearing yourself across the surface. <laughs> so you have to find the right balance, right? You gotta slow yourself uh, as carefully as possible. Uh, meanwhile, you you know you want to do this early also you know if you do this high up it's a lot easier oh there you see i'm just burning up trying to get this going and failed completely um now there's been a lot of suggestions that the dark side is somewhat more uh, amenable to landing than the light side i have not seen this uh it does appear that the temperature is more or less the same whatever hemisphere you fly to and uh, the difficulty is the same regardless. However, all is not lost, and there are things you can do as a pilot to make landing on this planet possible. So what I did in this case was I upped my thrust to weight ratio. I got rid of the little engine and put on four aero spikes attached at the corners, obviously, because this is an upper stage vehicle, and my thrust to weight ratio gets up around 18. Um, that means I can run my engines at around 10 to 20 percent and as you can see I'm doing a relatively oh dear um, it was working really well until it exploded and it could have worked still if we'd had explosions on opposite sides but uh, no the game decided to just ruin me completely it took off two and uh, there was no way for me to keep this flying and of course I plummeted straight to the surface yes <laughs> but uh, that's not to say that it isn't possible. This one, you know, the, alt the ground was obviously around 3.7 kilometers, and it turns out there is a slight altitude dependent, or there's a significant altitude dependency. This uh, target surface is maybe 500 meters higher up, and as you can see, I'm uh, getting down a little more carefully here, being a lot more in control. Keep it just trying to keep my engines uh, descending at around six meters per second. So, yeah, this one actually works a lot better. I think the picking a good place to land is a good idea. At this point, I still hadn't realized there was no difference between the light side and the dark side, or at least no difference I can tell. But nonetheless, yes, I do get this down. I hit the translatron and I tell it to land 
And there we go. We put ourselves down on the side of a mountain on Moho. Excellent. And so, yeah, it was time for a bit of an EVA because, let's face it, it's the dark side and we don't have any lights other than those attached to Bill Kerman's suit. So let's get him out for a look around and admire this uh, brave new frontier that he has explored. 4.3 kilometers up. It's really spooky, I have to say, landing on the dark side of this planet. There's like nothing to see here. There's like almost no ambient light. And uh, the surface is a rather featureless brown. Uh, I guess that is a uh, volcanic ash. Oh, yes. And um, being foolish as I was, I completely forgot to fit this rocket with any ladders of any sort. And so, yeah, he's stuck on the surface and he can't jump high enough. Moho has, actually has pretty significant gravity. It's, I think, maybe about half of what Kerbin's gravity is. That means you're certainly not going to be able to jump back to that ship. So yeah, let's uh, now try taking this back to space. Now, the same rules apply trying to lift off, that you cannot use more thrust. You can't use too much thrust because the uh, it'll start to overheat. So yeah, I'm just going to try and get it up vertically as high as possible. The idea is if you get it up high enough, then uh, you can perhaps get more... You can use more thrust. But uh, it was not to be... <laughs> and the fuel tanks again exploded first, leaving me with a rocket with absolutely no engines at all. However, on the light side, there is this huge feature which uh, looks like a giant orifice of some sort. I'm not going to make a goat sea reference. Oh, wait, I just did. Yeah, uh, these things are relatively, they're pretty high up. I think that mountain maybe is like 10 kilometers up if you can land on the rim. So it is actually a good target to aim for, since the altitude dependence of the temperature means that there will be less overheating happening uh, as you approach the surface. So that perhaps is the best thing to do, is to find a large, high altitude piece of scenery. And this is the most obvious one. Plus, it's on the light side because it is so close, because Moho is close enough to the sun that they have decided to tidally lock the rotation. That means it will rotate once for every rotation around the, the sun. That means it keeps the same side to the sun always, rather like Minmus and the moon keep one side pointed towards the planet Kerbin. So yeah, just a time accelerating down here. And you can see that it's not... I'm obviously landing on the slopes. I'm adjusting this a little better this time. Using the, the translatron and manually inputting my vertical speed and just having it keep that constant seems to be a lot easier. Um, it does seem to be a good idea when you're coming down to just burn and kill as much of your lateral velocity above the atmosphere because above the atmosphere you don't have the heat overheating issues. The atmosphere begins around 25 kilometers up, so if you do that you certainly save a lot. Um, yeah, so the, the altitude of the surface here is going to be about six kilometers. And as you can see, I'm holding the same thrust all the way down. But my overheat is still rising as I get closer and closer and the ambient temperature rises. At least I think that's what's going on. There was probably some dev out there that's laughing at my complete misinformation. So yeah, what I'm doing is I've, I've literally just set the smart ASS to point vertical and my translatron is, is just controlling my vertical speed and I'm just punching in the numbers as I get lower and lower. This is uh, about as easy as it comes. I'm not using the landing autopilot because the landing autopilot, no doubt, will uh, not care for the, the temperature um, limitations. Yeah, you see how far down the, the slope I'm here. I am here. No problem. Oh, oh dear, dear, dear. Come back, come back. Yes, there we go. And there we go. Successful landing on the light side. All those people that tell you it's impossible to land on the light side, show them this video. In fact, show this video to everyone because, you know, I like, um, I like it when people give me comments. So, yeah, we are now going to try launching back into space. And I think because we're starting about a kilometer higher than our previous one, we are going to we might be able to do this a little better. So, yeah, let's uh, get ourselves set up. And away we go, back into space. Now, obviously we used up a whole bunch of fuel getting down here as delicately as possible because, uh, yeah, we couldn't do the whole suicide burn thing. 
uh, our gate will goal here is to get high enough up. That's why I've got the orbital information here. You want to get the apoaps above the atmosphere. At that point, you are absolutely safe from overheating. So, uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to do. And it, it actually is relatively easy uh, because you, you don't need to... So coming down, you may find yourself, sometimes you're coming in a little fast and you need to increase your thrust. But uh, on the way up, that's not the problem. And yeah, it becomes easy enough to get up into space and uh, circularize your orbit when you get up near the top. But then, of course, I am now uh, stuck orbiting Moho with uh, not enough fuel to get home. Probably enough fuel to break orbit, but certainly not enough fuel to get up to EVE and very unlikely that I'd have enough fuel to get home. But you know what? I think we've done this before and uh, we quite enjoy these rescue missions. So until next time, I'm leaving him here. I'm Scott Manley. You guys fly safe.